Hello everyone and welcome to the October 2018 update of the Power BI desktop. We're trying something a little different this month in terms of the video. Instead of one really long video, what we're going to do is have an individual video per section of features and then we're going to just string them together as part of a playlist. So hopefully this makes it a little bit easier for you to watch a given section if you're only interested in some of the features or if you only have small amounts of time, you can watch one video per break you have in the day or something like that. So make sure to give us feedback on what you think of the new style of the video. We're gonna continue to iterate and continue to try and make the videos better and better for you guys watching. Okay, getting started. The uh, first section we're gonna focus on this month is the reporting section. And that's what this video is gonna be about. And our first feature in the reporting section is search on the filter cards. And this sounds like a pretty small feature, uh, but it is pretty impactful. If you are trying to search for a given value within a category to filter your report by, and you have a lot of them, for example, an ID number or something like that, having the search capability really makes a difference in terms of the, your usability of your report. And up until now, we've only had this on our slicers. And so we're excited you now can use it on the filter card as well. So just jumping to the report to demonstrate it, if I go over for this matrix to the filter pane and I open up the subcategory card, you can see that in the basic filtering type, I can now just start typing, say, home, and my list filters down to just the items that contain those letters. So in my case, that's home, home and office or home theater, and all I have to do is check it, and now I can filter my matrix. Next up, we have yet another improvement in terms of accessibility. If you don't follow our releases month by month, uh, just so you know, we have been doing a lot of work to make Power BI fully accessible end to end from both an authoring and interactivity and a consumption standpoint. And we've made a lot of progress across this past year, really, especially in terms of consumption and interactivity. And we've now been entering into that phase where we're starting to work on more of the authoring gestures and making them more accessible. So this month in terms of accessibility, we've really been improving the experience in terms of authoring charts. So this includes a couple of things. Um, we, our field list is now completely, completely supports both keyboard navigation and screen readers. So you can navigate without needing a mouse to change up the configuration of the fields within your field list. And it works well with whenever you're using a screen reader. Another feature that's kind of actually a more of a feature, which is great for everyone in terms of usability, is that we've added the ability to, through the, the context menu of any given field that you have in the field list, you can move things around the field well through there, which is great if you can only use a keyboard, but also great if you just need to, you know, really quickly shift something from one bucket to another or move it up or down the hierarchy in that bucket, you can now just do that through the context menu. And we've also done a lot of work in terms of Q&A to improve its, the usability of that with a screen reader and a keyboard as well. Just to show you the field list capabilities real quick, like I said, you can now use just a keyboard. You can navigate between all the different wells and you'll see outlines whenever you're on a given field. And the screen reader is gonna read off everything about that field. It'll tell you what what a bucket you're in, all the useful things you need to know in order to be able to continue to modify and build your charts. If you open up the context menu for the field list, a field in the field list, you'll see these two new options, move and move to. Move will let you move things within, within the bucket. So you can move things up or down. If there's multiple fields, you can move it all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom as well and move to is moving things between the different buckets. So if some right now I'm on rows, so it's letting me know that I can move that field from the rows into either the columns or the values bucket. And that is obviously a really useful feature if you want if you need to if, if the field had been put by default into the wrong bucket and you need to go in and shift stuff around. Like I said, 
earlier, Q&A is also much more screen reader friendly. It reads you out a lot of use. As soon as you open up Q&A, if you're using a screen reader, it will read you out a lot of useful instructions on how to use the screen reader with the with Q&A. It gives you a lot of keyboard shortcuts. It explains how our autocomplete works, things like that. And uh, the keyboard experience, while well, was already pretty great with Q&A, you, it's even better now. We've made some improvements to that as well. So we have two really great ways to author charts without ever needing to use a mouse. The last feature we have this month in our reporting section is a huge performance improvement for our ArcGIS maps by Esri. They released a new version of the visual and now you'll see some massive improvements. If you start cross highlighting on different categories in a different chart, you'll see the map visual update almost instantly to the new location and render all the points. It's, it's amazingly fast and smooth considering the amount of points that the map is rendering. At mentioning points, because of this performance improvements, you can also now map more points than ever before on the ArcGIS map. So if you're using Latin long, you can go all the way up to 30,000 points. And if you're using the boundaries, so for example, zip codes, you can get up to 15,000 points through the Arc GIS map now. So just jumping over to the sample report to demonstrate the performance, you can see here I'm right now looking at USA. But if I switch to China, you almost instantly the points show up and then you see like the, the map load behind it. And it's pretty snappy given, like I said, the number of points that is being loaded. As soon as I click on a point, it instantly jumps into that view and shifts the map. So if you haven't been playing with this map before or haven't for a while, make sure to give it a try and you'll you really see that it's come miles in terms of, in terms of performance. It's a really great experience.